For I've been making V8 mid-engine sports cars since the early 70s. Today we have what I think you'll probably agree is one of the prettiest red Ferraris you're ever going to find. It's the 458 Speciale. It's the culmination of all that technology, all that racing. It's the last of the V8 normally aspirated Ferraris. It's a very special car. We get to drive it on the road today. I'm sure you're going to love it. I'm not sure if cars get much better than this. Ferrari owner though. Yeah, they're not all like that, are they? Particularly the owner of this Ferrari. It's this car, it's worth an absolute bucket load. And he's just said, there you go, take it for the day, have fun. So thanks Kevin for, uh, for letting us uh, use your beautiful Speciale today. Kevin, you rock, man. Thank you, man. Yeah. You know, the one thing with Ferraris, you, you've got to drive them, you know. Why, they, why do you have to drive this? It? It's, it's good for them. They deteriorate if you don't drive them. And, and they do like to be driven hard every now and again. And not whether we're going to drive it that hard today. And, you know, we're lucky enough, as you I'll know, uh, to have driven this car on the track a lot. In fact, our, our recent track test up against the GT3 and the SLS Black. So, Yes, if you haven't seen the track test, have a good look at it, please. But gee, it's firm. This is, this is kind of like the McLaren, the 600 LT. A little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's quite as rough as that. I mean, with that carbon fibre uh, chassis tub that the McLaren has, I think it's even even harsher yep. uh, than this. So this this is a little more compliant over the bumps, but not as compliant as the Porsche. Yep. But I've got it in bumpy road there uh, setting now with our shocks. Uh -huh. And when you go into bumpy road, it does soak those things up a little bit better. So it's, it's not bad to drive on the road. That's as soft as it goes, is it? That's as soft as it goes. Well, let me tell you, it's still quite firm. So as you know, Oh, we got a car behind. Somebody's caught us, Mark. How could that happen? The first rule of Italian drive. What's the behind? It doesn't matter. Yeah. What's behind me is not important. Let's stop talking about cars now and just concentrate on what you're doing. Jeez, it's got some good grip, mate. You can see the car hangs on really well. And you can really feel the difference between this and the Porsche being a mid-engine car. You're sitting right in the middle of the car. The weight balance, the weight, the, the, the weight transfer is fantastic when you lift off the throttle. It turns in beautifully. It's much sharper on the turn-in than the Porsche. Yep. And through these corners here, you can really feel sensational brakes. Turns in beautifully. It sits so flat in the corners. I actually think it sits a little flatter than the Porsche. So it grips really nice through the turn, but you do need to drive it through the turn on the throttle. So you need to be back on the gas as we come through. So you can feel there, beautiful um, engine yeah. note. Downshift is beautiful, great, great blip on the throttle there. Yeah, it's changed its character. This slightly smoother road has made all the difference. It's made too. all the difference. Yeah. And if yeah. we go into race mode, that'll change that again. You can feel the downshift's harsher and faster. <laughs> You're not the, kidding. The upshift is quicker. Oh yeah. We can feel that there. A very quick downshift, very quick blip on the throttle. That'll be less harsh if I'm on the brakes. So you need to be braking pretty hard while you're downshifting to get that working correctly. To take the load off the downshift. To take the load off the engine. You can feel that. Down a second there. Ferrari's been making, their real bread and butter is, is the mid-engine V8 sports car. And they've been doing them since 1975. Before that they had the Dino, you've already seen the video of the Dino, we've got a lovely review of that. That was a V6 transverse right. mounted. Yep. And they started with a, the 308 in 1975 and that's a V8 also transverse mounted, three litre car. Around 250 horsepower, something like that, not particularly. And then they went through the whole succession over the next 45 years, 308, 328, 348, 355, 360, 430, yep. 458, and then the 488, and then finally the F8 Tributo. And they're all V8 mid-engine. When they went to the 3448, they, they stopped mounting the engine transversely and they mounted longitudinally. Yeah. And the, that car was quite a lot heavier and wider for various reasons. It was a bit more like the Testarossa, the 348. And that's the ugly duckling in the group, can I say that? It's, it's not, it's got that 80s kind of chunky look. Yeah, it does. And then they went back to the 355, which is really elegant car. Pretty looking car, isn't it? And the 360, also a very pretty car. Between 1,400 and 1,500 kilos. 
The 430, another another 100 horsepower, big stepper, 4.3 litres. Yeah, they were sort of a little bit unloved in some ways. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them, but they just, I don't know. I think people expected a big leap from the 360, I don't think it was, whereas the 458 yeah. was a huge leap. Yeah. Ferrari will sometimes do that, but not every time. And this is the last of the normally aspirated V8s. It's a beautiful motor, four and a half litres, and this car is significantly lighter than the standard 458. It's only just a scrape, give or take 1,400 kilos, whereas the standard one's 1,540. So after this car came the 488, and that was again a big step up in power, another 100 horsepower, but turbos, and a quite a different character to this car. This, this car is a screamer, isn't it? 9,000 RPM. Speciale has a, a very different exhaust note compared to the standard uh, Italia 458. Much deeper throatier sound. This doesn't have that real, real uh, high pitch sort of scream. And if I go into race mode, oh, that got louder. A little droney if you were driving in race mode all the time. Yep. Yep. If you can hear that with the exhaust. What? What did you say, young fella? <laughs> Let's go back into sport mode. Yep. The thing with Ferrari, the, the heart of any Ferrari is the engine, unlike, as we've said before, McLaren. I think the heart of the McLaren is the chassis. Yeah. And Porsche, I would say similarly, you know, there's so much being tied up with the engine on a Porsche. However, the, the great thing I love about the Ferrari is you can see the engine. Uh, as we've seen it there before, it's a work of art. That's why it's under glass. Uh, a Porsche engine, you've really got to get the thing on the hoist before you can see any of it. Yep. And that's the thing I like about Ferrari. They've thought through those aspects of the vehicle really well. When I was about 10 years old, one of our neighbors had a steel blue Ferrari Dino. It was the envy of the neighbourhood. One day the owner took my brother and I for a short blat around the block. We both sat in the one passenger seat, actually we stood on the passenger seat, we were quite small. The guy was a maniac and I don't remember much more about it except that it was noisy and thrilling and very naughty and my dad was quite cross about it when he found out. So let me ask, why do we review the cars we do? One reason, so that people who are thinking about buying one can get a feeling for what it would be really like to drive one in real world conditions and the pros and cons. So you might ask, why would we bother reviewing mega buck exotic toys like this one that the vast majority of us, including me, I might add, cannot justify nor afford? Well, look at it this way. I'm pretty sure I'll never have a Ferrari 458 in my garage, let alone a Speziale, but I do enjoy being in one, driving or not, and maybe you do too. So maybe that's the experience we can share with a lot of people, what it's really like to be in these cars. So let me ask you, if you did own this car, what would you do with it? Would you leave it tucked away while it depreciates, like the Sultan of Brunei and his literally hundreds of Ferraris? No, you can't do that. Two more Ferrari fans. You would take it out for a spin, wouldn't you? And you would take somebody, Hi, maybe some kid or your partner with you. Good, do you like it? Take a photo if you want. It's not ours, we just stole it. Because a pleasure shared is twice as much fun, isn't it? So this is where a proper sports car is different from a piece of pottery or a Rembrandt or a Rolex that's so expensive you keep an identical fake one that you actually wear. No, a Ferrari is a work of art, but it needs to be driven. It's like a Stradivarius. You can look at it all you like, but it has to be played to be appreciated. So that's why we're here, whether it's an affordable hot hatch or an exotic collectible. Let's play this instrument properly. No chopsticks, which means no tire shredding, no launch control, no drifting, just proper driving with a proper driver on some interesting twisty roads. So join me now in the front seat of our own personal concert hall. Welcome to Incarnation Australia. Have a sunny day have largely COVID-free country. Did our Prime Minister get impeached today? Uh, no, we don't do that in Australia. They just get fired by the Queen. That's a much better system, <laughs> though. The Queen goes, you're fired. Socially responsible mode engaged. And up the hill. 
I don't know, I'm shifting at six and a half thousand revs. As you know, you can shift this car on every shift up at 9,000, no problem. We've done that, and that's what we do on the racetrack, so. You, you can't drive this car on the roads anywhere near its limits without them throwing away the keys. So in race mode there, you can feel that the, the gear shifts are just a lot more aggressive, a lot faster. Really good torque as no, well. We're not going anywhere near full throttle, we're just sort of stroking it up the hill here yep. at a nice pace. And you really can feel the difference when you go into race mode, the whole car changes. The engine's so much faster, so much more responsive. This turns in beautifully. It's a lovely corner there, really off camber at the top. You can just feel the grip on the car. 1.3 G's lateral is yeah. power pulls. This turns, you know, the pinpoint accuracy on the steering, you're really connected to the road. Yeah. Geez, those shifts are quite harsh in yeah. race mode. Yeah. Harsh if you're not braking super hard. I'm not braking super hard there. Yeah. <clears throat> if you're on a racetrack, you wouldn't feel that quite as much. Yeah. It says you don't get away with just loafing in this car. You have to pay attention and drive me. And I will do what you want. It just responds to every little bit of input. That's why your inputs need to be accurate. You, you can get into a bit of trouble in one of these cars. Yeah. The road's a bit bumpy there, so I've just gone into bumpy road mode with the shocks. It does make a difference. You can probably hear it in my voice. I'm not gone away from quite as much as I was before. Yeah. This was the first Ferrari that did not come with a manual gearbox option. Your only choice is the seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox, correct? Yeah, and Ferrari are famous for that. They pioneered this flappy paddle technology back in uh, with F1 in the late 80s and early 90s, and they've always been ahead of the game. They're better than anyone else in terms of transmissions. Porsche are getting close now. They're very, very good with the current Porsche transmission, but uh, I still think Ferrari's a little better. I'd prefer it if the paddles moved with the steering wheel. Yeah, a lot of cars have those. The Ferrari have always kept the, steer the paddles on the steering column as such, but with the Speciale, they are a lot longer than the standard 458 Italia. I find it okay. I find the paddles really nice. It's very rare that you would not be able to pull uh, a gear lever up or down during a corner if you needed to do so. I think it's better suited to the track than this road, even though this is a moderately good road. But uh, it's still compliant, it's still pleasant, it's not unpleasant. I think part of it's the extremely firm seats. They're obviously carbon fibre shell without a lot of padding and the chassis, there's absolutely no movement in their chassis is there? It, the car's but, just a little bit more raw in every way and I've driven the 458 Italia a lot and this Speciale a lot and they are really are very different cars to drive. Certainly from an investment point of view, any 458 I think will be a, a good investment, Speciale even more so. The thing is this, this car is far more expensive than the standard 458. They, they run around it sounds funny to say this kind of thing, but 350000 to, <laughs> to 450000 yeah. is the typical range in Australia for a 458. But if you can find one of these, you're talking more like $700,000. That's right. Because they are that special. If you, if you can find one, a 355 or a 360, preferably a coupe and preferably a manual, is, is a, a solid investment, isn't it? Would yeah. you say? Yeah. Any, fact, any of the early Ferraris... 355, 360 in a manual yeah. are, are always going to be good and, and they're rare, particularly the 360s. There's not a lot of manual 360s, 360s around. So sharp on the steering. The turn-in is so responsive. Yeah, It is a cool thing to have shift lights on your steering wheel, but then they're, they're not terribly great in this car. They, can't, they start too soon and there's not enough distinction between when they first start to Change gear. Yeah, they're not great. They could have done a much, a much better job with that. The feeling I get through the steering is something with this particular car that I really like. The weight in the corners is just sensational. I really like the fact that you just don't have to turn the steering wheel much to get around a corner. It's not a car with that weight transfer that you feel like you have to throttle steer it that much. 
it just the yeah. impression I'm getting is it's got so much grip and it's so flat. If you just want it to turn tighter, you just turn it tighter and it'll do it. It will, it'll respond. You, yeah. you, don't, you don't need to sort of go, oh, this is tightening, I'll roll off the throttle a little bit more, let it settle, because yeah. there's no settle. It's already settled. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, as we know, when you're going a bit quicker, you've got active aero components to this car at the front and the rear. Yep. With a rear diffuser that actually deploys and lowers actually down. Moves down. Yep. And actually gives you significantly more downforce at the rear. Um, you could be doing about 170 k's an hour to get that happening, so you won't be doing that today. So, you know, third gear through there, we're only doing five and a half thousand revs. come off the throttle, there's a lot of engine braking in this car. A little bit of a lift off the throttle for a fast corner really does slow you down a lot. Superb feel on the brakes, a very firm pedal. You get a little bit of a squeal there, there's nowhere near enough heat in these brakes. They aren't as good as the uh, Porsche GT3 carbon ceramics. They, they just don't, they need a lot of heat to work and honestly I don't see how you're ever going to get that amount of heat in driving them on the road. One of the things with Ferrari, of course, you can drive it in auto mode. Um, but as soon as I put that into auto, we're doing probably 60 k's an hour, 65 k's an hour. It'll be straight up to sixth, oh, and horrible. then in a minute into seventh. It's it's okay. Um, it's not but it's okay. Not great. It's not great. It's not okay. The Porsche in in auto mode, without using the PDK, without using paddles, uh, is much much better. Mm. But if you go to Ferrari and you say, this thing's rubbish in auto, they're just going to say, why are you driving it in auto? Yep. It's a Ferrari, you use yep. the paddles. Mind you, we can't hear each other. Well, that's right. And it's it's actually horrible on the track in auto if you drive it oh, yeah. in auto. It's dreadful. But yeah, you come yeah. out of the corner in second, and it goes, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. That's, that's exactly what happens. The next corner goes back down to second. You get brrrr. And it should be fourth. Why doesn't it go? Come on. As a racing driver, as someone who's spent great part deal of their life driving race cars all around the world. This is a race car, it feels like a race car. You're sitting in the right position. The ergonomics are perfect. Oh, that's so relaxing. Can you actually hear the stereo? It doesn't really matter about the stereo. When you've got that engine there, who needs music? That's it. It doesn't compete, does it? it doesn't compete. Now it's funny driving around in this car today, Mark. We've had little boys take photos with their camera phones, and we've had, for no reason at all, while being parked well off the road, we've had people come past and blast their horn as they came past. And what can be the motivation for that kind of behaviour, really? It's just, it's just pure, I don't like you. Yeah, you're driving a Ferrari, I don't like you. Now look, we know a lot of Ferrari owners, most of them, are most really, of, really nice great. people. Yeah. Okay, so here's our score. Personality, five. Yep. Performance? Five. Yeah, I think five, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Presentation? Uh, no brainer. Yeah. Five. Practicality? Five? Oh, no, no, no. Definitely not a five. I'm afraid it's a two. Yeah, it's, probably two. It's to be comparable with other vehicles we've done, it's a two. And lastly, price? Well. Two and a half? Yeah. So the score is? Nineteen and a half. Is that good? That's okay, isn't it? That's pretty good. I mean, the best we've ever got is 20.2. So, the verdict. Full marks for performance, presentation and personality. Not so much for practicality and price, though. Inside or out the Speziale, like it or not, this is a car that always makes itself the centre of attention to you and everybody else within earshot. I've been in cars that accelerate harder through the gears, such as the 488 or the 812 Superfast, but not by much. On the right road, which means a smooth road, it does just about everything you could want. Pin sharp steering, turn in response is phenomenal, the lateral grip level is really high, and thanks to the Formula One inspired electronics, the traction, particularly out of the corners, is, is formidable. As a road car, a standard 458 Italia would probably be better, simply because of the ride comfort. I never thought I'd say this, but the Speziale is actually a little bit too hardcore for me. Mark loves it, and I can see why. You sit so low that it just shouts race car at you. There's lots of chassis fine-tuning settings for the current weather, tyre and road surface and that you can only really exploit on the track. Mark loves all that stuff. 
But that hard edge comes at a price you can't ever really relax. You have to be constantly on the alert for potholes, driveways and careless numbnuts in SUVs. Hey, thanks for watching. I know it's been a long video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. We'd love to know what you think, so leave a comment. Share with your motoring friends and it would really help us if you subscribe to the channel. Next week we've got something much cheaper. It's fast and lots of fun, so don't miss that. Mark can now have the last word on the Speziale in his own inimitable, understated manner. What a great car though. Oh hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please share it with your motoring friends. And above all, click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out, hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.